So you will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. In a recent episode of Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast, Star Talk, Neil brings up the concept of species bias in a conversation that he's having with Chuck Nice. I just want to riff on plants and animals. Okay. I don't know if there's a lesson in here or insights, but I just have a lot of thoughts. I'm just going to sort of spill them out. Right okay. Away. Well, okay. here's can, my can first we thought. Both delicious. <laughs> okay. All right. In an almost parody fashion, Chuck Nice instantly assumes the role of human becoming increasingly uncomfortable about conversations regarding animals and morality. But to be fair to Neil, from this point onwards, he seems to take the conversation in what at first appears to be a very positive direction. Do you remember all of the concerns people had about tuna being caught oh God, yes. by nets? Right. And the issue wasn't that tuna were being caught by nets. It was that the nets were, were trapping hurting dolphins. Dolphins. Right. Because dolphins aren't delicious. And, no. <laughs> and tuna is. <laughs> the fact that we're protecting the dolphins but eating the tuna, I remember thinking to myself, why doesn't anybody care about the tuna? So Neil is actually making a really important point here, which is why is it only wrong to kill tuna when dolphins have been killed at the same time as well? After all, morally speaking, both dolphins and tuna are sentient animals who have the capacity to suffer. So why is it not morally wrong to kill both species? But the problem is from this point, Neil's arguments start to become deeply, deeply flawed. And he starts making straw man arguments as you guys will see in just a moment because he seems to have a real blind spot when it comes to this concept of species bias and his cognitive dissonance really starts to show itself. But before that, I just want to let you guys know about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different courses, about a wide variety of different subjects, which are perfect if you're looking to expand a pre-existing skill set or looking to take up a new creative pursuit. Now, a course that I would recommend is called Video for Instagram, Tell an Engaging Story in Less Than a Minute, which is by Helice. And it's a perfect course if you're looking to create engaging content for Instagram and want to make videos about veganism potentially, animal rights, and who knows, maybe even species bias. Skillshare are also offering the first 1,000 people who click the link in my description a one month free trial of Skillshare, which is perfect if you'd like to try this course or indeed any of the other courses which allow you to explore your creativity. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now let's see when Neil takes this concept of species bias. For those who would eat the, the, the tuna. tuna and specifically not eat the dolphin because it's a mammal. So what you're saying is that in the tree of life, which has fungus and bacteria and plants and animals. You have taken this slender branch in that tree of life called mammals. And some people said, no, it's not that they're mammals, it's that they have big brains. Their brain right, is they're larger than us. A okay, lot of so now say we're that. saying, now we're saying we value them because they have big brains. Now, firstly, people's species bias isn't along the lines of mammals versus other types of animals. After all, many of the species of animals that we exploit and kill, such as sheep, cattle, pigs, and rabbits, are of course mammals. Secondly, people aren't against dolphins being killed because they have big brains. It's normally because they're highly intelligent, which yes, of course, comes as a consequence of them having big brains, but it's not the brain size that matters. After all, if dolphins had small brains, but were just as intelligent, people would still object to them being killed in the same way. But whilst Neil is misrepresenting the argument that people use, it is also important to mention that intelligence shouldn't define worth of life. And so that still isn't a reason why it's morally acceptable to kill a tuna, but not a dolphin. Every living thing on earth is as far away from an evolutionary uh, uh, place from the very first single celled life as is all other life on earth, okay? So you're saying, oh, the brain is important for survival. Oak trees are still alive today and they don't have any brains, okay? And they're doing just fine. All I'm saying is that whatever struggles, trials and tribulations we went through as vertebrate mammals, okay? Uh, whatever we went through, every single other living thing on this earth has also survived to this point. Species, that is. 
or evolved to fit this point. So, and so you want to value judge it? This is a mammal, this has a brain. All right, but have you stopped and thought about what a tree is? The problem is Neil is viewing every living species as an abstraction. He's removing or maybe overlooking the species specific traits that are important when assigning moral worth to the individual species that we're talking about. And in essence, what Neil is doing is he's grouping every single form of life as being morally the same simply because they have life and have undergone evolution. The possession of life isn't what's important when assigning moral worth to an individual species. Case in point, Neil talks about oak trees and he makes out or says that the reason that we view oak trees differently to animals is because they don't have brains. But it's not the fact they don't have brains that's important, it's the fact that oak trees are not sentient. They don't have subjective experiences, they can't suffer or feel pain. That's what makes them morally less important than animals who have brains, yes, but also a sentient. That's the important thing when assigning moral worth, not the possession of life, but the possession of sentience. Now, if a living being, animal or otherwise, didn't have a brain, but was sentient and conscious and had subjective experiences, then they too would also be worthy of moral consideration. So you will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. So you're okay with that, but not eating the animals. You have judged that your side of the tree of life is more important than this other side of the tree of life. Yes, we are creating moral distinctions between animals, plants, and other life forms, but because of the reasons that I mentioned before, primarily sentience. We basically eradicated smallpox, right? Well, what about the smallpox microbes, all right? How do they feel about this? The smallpox microbes don't feel anything about being wiped out precisely because they are microbes. They don't feel anything. They're not conscious and they're not sentient. Are we really so desperate to justify killing animals that will question the morality of wiping out microbes and safeguarding children from deadly diseases. I mean, where does this take us? Should we not take antibiotics because bacteria are alive? Should we not kill cancer cells because cancer cells are alive? I'm not, I'm not landed anywhere. I just think about all of life and all the struggles that life had to go through to get to where it is today in the tree of life, four and a half billion years after life began. But Neil, you're being disingenuous here because you have landed somewhere. By the fact that you eat animal products and therefore pay for sentient beings to be killed needlessly, by that fact alone, you have landed somewhere. This whole idea that you're discussing right now is precisely because you have landed somewhere and you're trying to justify where you have landed. When I eat lettuce or cucumber, I'm thinking, uh, you know, like as they say with the Native Americans, I, I'm thankful to the plant. And in the same way, I'm thankful to the pig or the cow or the, you know, whatever else. These are things that were alive. Neil keeps conflating life with sentience. And Neil's argument basically goes, well, everything is alive, therefore I'm morally justified to kill anyone and everything. And why has he done this? Well, probably because Neil consumes tuna. And so by consuming tuna, he has at some point realized his species bias by the fact that he would consume tuna, but not dolphins. Now this leaves Neil with two options. The first option is he can obviously recognize his species bias and stop consuming tuna and instead just eat plants, or alternatively, Neil can try and find a reason why eating plants is morally the same as consuming tuna, dolphins, or any other animal for that matter. And unfortunately, as I quickly realized when I watched the video for the first time, Neil opts for the latter. He makes the justification that morally it's the same to eat plants and animals because plants and animals both have life. And unfortunately, he's overlooked the sentience of animals, which is why it's acceptable sweet plants, but not animals. And if we use Neil's arguments and logic, well then why is it morally objectionable to kill a human? Why is it morally wrong therefore for a cannibal to consume a human over chickpeas or dogs or cats or pigs or 
cows or even dolphins and tuna. Why is it morally wrong for the cannibal to consume the human? After all, the human and every other species I just mentioned possesses life. And if we use Neil's logic even further, is it now more morally permissible for the cannibal to consume a human if the cannibal gives thanks to the human they're about to consume, because that's the logic that Neil uses, so why can't a cannibal use the same logic? And in the case of the cannibal choosing a human over chickpeas, I'm sure the argument that Neil would use is that the human is sentient and conscious, the chickpea is not. The human suffers when the cannibal chooses to consume them, whereas the chickpea doesn't suffer, the chickpea can't suffer. In essence, the human is sentient, conscious, and has subjective experiences, which means the human has moral worth. But it's the same for the non-human animals. This is the foundation of veganism and speciesism. The fact that non-human animals, like humans, are conscious, sentient, and have subjective experiences, which includes pain and suffering. If it's not morally acceptable for the cannibal to choose the human over the chickpea because the human is sentient and conscious, then it's not morally acceptable for us other humans to consume the cows, chickens and pigs over chickpeas because cows, chickens and pigs are sentient and conscious. I just think of all life as sacred and I don't, having after having done so, I don't value judge one life over another based on its proximity to us on the tree of life. I view all life as sacred, which is why I choose to kill the most amount of life as possible. And again, that's a straw man argument, Neil. The reason that people abstain from killing animals isn't because of their proximity to us. It's like I've said before in numerous times during this video, sentience, consciousness, and the capacity to experience subjectively. That's why we're against needlessly killing animals. So by Neil's logic, if you're driving down the road and a dog runs out in front of your car and you have two choices, the first choice being running over the dog and killing them, or the second choice being swerving onto a bed of roses and saving the life of the dog, by Neil's arguments and logic, morally, both those actions are the same. If we choose to run over the dog intentionally when we don't have to, that is the same, morally speaking, in Neil's eyes, as swerving onto a bed of roses to save the life of the dog. Or if you had the choice between cutting a cow's throat or cutting the grass, according to Neil's argument, which is that all life is sacred, cutting the grass is morally the same as cutting the throat of the cow needlessly. And even if Neil's arguments were morally valid, because of the feed that's used to feed animals, and because animal farming is the number one driver of rainforest loss and habitat destruction, vastly more plants are killed for a non-vegan than they are a vegan. So even if morally killing plants was the same as killing animals, we would still be morally obligated to be vegan anyway, because by being vegan, we actually result in less plants being killed as well. So ironically, Neil, in an attempt to debunk veganism, has actually made an argument in favor of veganism, and if Neil actually lived by the principles and logic that he is using in this video, well, he would be vegan anyway. And look, whilst this video is undeniably frustrating, it does point to a really significant positive, which is that Neil is actually thinking about his own species bias. I think about it all the time when I'm preparing food. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I don't want to be speciesist. And so yes, it's annoying, and yes, it's frustrating, and yes, Neil's logic is really, really illogical, but ultimately what it shows is that Neil is grappling with his own species bias. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.